What's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Okay, so this has been getting a lot of traction lately, and let's talk about it. Uh, Major League Baseball is currently fighting a lawsuit. It's an eight-year-old lawsuit, actually, uh, that is for compensating players, minor league players, during spring training. And so we've talked about this in the past in other videos, but I really want to get in depth on both what's being said here and what's going on. The trial is set to begin June 1st, um, but basically Major League Baseball is trying to get this uh, thrown out before we get there. And so let's talk a little bit about it because you might not know how spring training works and that minor league spring training players do not get paid. They just get meal money. That's M-E-A-L, meal. I say mail money sometimes and people think that we're talking like post office. No, it's meal money. I'm gonna be very specific with the way that I say that. So let's get into all the details right now. Okay, so first thing, let's just set up basically what happens in minor league spring training. First, there's two things. There's minor league spring training and there's major league spring training. Major league spring training is where the major league players are going to go. So if you're on the 40 man, you're going to go to major league spring training. And there's also going to be a couple of invites to non 40 man rostered players. Minor league spring training is for everybody else, all the other minor leaguers. Okay. Minor league spring training is typically huge. Now I know they've cut down on the amount of minor league teams over the last year or so. When I was playing, there was like 4,000 minor league teams. That's what it felt like. So there was just a, it felt like a million uh, kids, young adults in minor league spring training. So in minor league spring training, which usually starts right around like the end of February is when players start to come in. It's usually the month of March, maybe a little bit of, of February. And so when you go to this, which you have to go to, uh, you don't get paid this is not part of your salary. What you do get is you receive meal money. Now, when I played, it was $20 a day. So what would happen is you'd go in at the beginning of the week and you'd get your $20 for each day. So you get what, $140 and that would cover you for the week. My last year of playing, it went up to $25 a day and then I felt really rich. So I got the extra bump to, to $25. I'm not 100% sure what it is right now in minor league spring training. I'm actually trying to figure that out. It's either $25 or maybe it's a little bit higher, but regardless, it's not very high at all. So that's all you're gonna get paid. You're not gonna get any of your normal salary. Now, please also keep in mind that for minor league players, for most of these people in minor league camp, they're not gonna really be getting paid anything during the season. They're gonna be getting paid on average, let's say again, when I played, it was like anywhere from like six to $10,000 for the year. Now, minor league pay has increased a little bit, but we're still talking, you know, maybe 10 to $15,000 for a season. So not getting paid for an entire month when you're only getting paid, you know, 10, $15,000 for the whole year, that's, that's a really big deal. Now, a couple of other things to also keep in mind is that you, do, you are supplied with certain things when you go to minor league spring training. So the first thing is you do get a hotel that you don't have to pay for. Now, typically, it's when I was at the Padres, it was at the La Quinta, which is right across the street. So it's gonna be a hotel like that, and you're gonna have a roommate, and you're gonna be given a free room, so you do not have to pay for that. Now, depending on the team that you play for, or the organization that you're part of, I should say, meals are gonna be handled differently. So when I was with the Padres, the meals were great. You were supplied two meals a day. So you would come into the complex and you would eat both breakfast and then you would get lunch before uh, the game, All right? So you get two meals and those meals were really, really good. When I was with the Padres, it was a nice buffet and you actually ate with the major league team. Um, and this was, so uh, let me go through really quickly. The Padres was probably one of the best ones that I had. It was really, really good, okay? You have your fruits and every day was like pancakes and waffles and all that stuff, okay? So it was, it was a really nice breakfast and a, and a really nice lunch. And so you would not have to pay anything for that. That was provided to you. Now, I played on other teams where the food was not as good. I've told you about my experience with the Washington Nationals. For breakfast, I just ate at the hotel because that breakfast was better than the breakfast served at the, at the field. And then for lunch, uh, when I, my first day there, I got like this little tiny like styrofoam box and I opened up and it was like a sandwich about that big and like a little bag of Lay's potato chips basically. And I was like, I, I was in shock at first for a minute because I had come from the Padres, which had great food. So it really does depend on the team that you're, you're with. 
So you could get really good food or you could get really crappy food. And when I got that really crappy food, I would actually just leave and I'd go get my own lunch and I'd bring back like Chick-fil-A or something. So I had to buy my own lunch anyway, okay? So it does depend on the organization that you're with. And I'm hoping in today's game, now that we've tr moved forward, uh, you know, I haven't played since 2013. Hopefully all teams are providing minor leaguers with better food than, you know, a little sandwich that's this big for a 210 pound player. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, okay? But those are the two meals that we were always provided. Now, basically, now you have to take that extra money that you got, that meal money, and that helps you buy dinner. So that $25 or so will help you buy dinner. But you also have to, you know, kind of live a little bit. Like, you'd probably like to, and you'd like to go maybe do something, maybe go get an ice cream afterwards. Like, my thing was I'd like to go to the movies, like Way LeBlanc and I and other teammates, we'd like to go to the movies, okay? So you're gonna have to use that money to go to a movie, okay? Um, and then any other thing that you want to do outside of baseball. Now, you're at the field a lot, but you do have a day off usually here and there. And so you're gonna have to take that money and figure out a way to make that last the entire day, which means you can't really do anything. And the other thing is some of these players have families. Some of these young players have kids. Um, and so they have to find out a way to not only provide food for themselves but how do I feed my kids or my wife or you know just anyone else that I'm supporting and then most players have some type of bills in their life right something even if you're just talking about gas trying to get from the stadium and back uh, your your car payment your insurance like everyone knows all the bills that you pay so as you can see trying to go a whole month without getting any payment other than just a little bit of meal money makes it very, very difficult to survive. Now, I always like to just mention again that I signed for a very large signing bonus, so I could afford to live. So sometimes people are like, yeah, but Matt, you made a lot of money with your signing bonus. Absolutely, I did, but there's a lot, a lot of minor leaguers that didn't get a signing bonus or got nothing basically for a signing bonus. So they're the majority. There's more players that aren't getting any signing bonuses or barely any signing bonuses. And those are the ones that obviously need more than just $25 a day in meal money. Okay, so now let's get back to this case. So a lawyer representing Major League Baseball said, and I'm, I wanna read this, I wanna pull this up and read it exactly what they said because this is interesting. This is the reason why they say that, that minor league players should not get paid while in spring training. Now, some of this is in like lawyer talk, okay? So I might not be smart enough to understand this exactly, but this is in quotes. It said, it is the players that obtain the greater benefit from the training opportunities that they are afforded than the clubs who actually just incur the cost of having that training. During the training season, the players are not employees and would not be subject to either the Fair Labor Standards Act or any state minimum wage act. Now, to me, this doesn't really make sense because when you're going to spring training, you have to go. Like you can't just stay home and say, hey, I'm gonna just train at my, my house so that I can work you know, another job and so I'll get my training in, but I'll also be able to support my family. They, they have to go, right? If they don't go to spring training, you won't play. The team's not gonna say, oh yeah, don't worry about it, don't come. You're gonna be cut. So here's a quote from uh, one of the lawyers that's representing the minor league player in this case. And they said, all of a sudden, they aren't employees during the time periods when we call it training, even though they are operating under the same employment contract that requires them to perform services, quote, throughout the calendar year. So some of these statements are actually a extension from statements made by Major League Baseball representatives last year in court talking about the same exact thing. And they said that players participating in spring training receive a $2,200 weekly value from their teams. And this is the quote. This figure is an estimate of the cost plaintiffs would have had to incur had they attended a baseball prospecting camp instead of participating in the minor leagues. And they also said that quote, players gained generally beneficial life skills from their time in the minor leagues. Okay, so I don't know what the hell <laughs> <laughs> is going on right now but all I know is this am I crazy am I crazy to think that minor league players should be paid I mean I remember playing and being like how like I've told these stories before watching players try to cook food out of their bathtubs in their hotel rooms and getting yelled at that you can't cook food in bathtubs and the reason they were doing it is because they couldn't afford to go out and buy food so they would they a bunch of players will go out and just buy like chicken from the grocery store and then they would try to cook it to try to save as much money but they would cook it in their bathtubs try to turn their bathtubs into stoves all right so 
Um, those are some of the type of things that are happening in the minor leagues, at least, again, when I was playing. Um, and the fact that players, again, have to go, right? You can't say you're not going to spring training. Like, I've never seen a player say, I'm not going to spring training. Uh, you have to go to it. But you don't get paid for it. I just don't, I don't understand that. And maybe I'm missing something here. I know some people say, you know, like, oh, it's like an internship. You're going to, to get skills or whatever. Like, every, I, I, I do that every single year. And again, I'm going to get skills. But then when I actually get paid, I'm only getting paid like $10,000 per year. I mean, this just all seems a little bit ridiculous to me. Maybe I'm missing something here. I don't really know. Um, but I, I've just saw so many players that made absolutely nothing during the season and then literally nothing in spring training. And to me, that just boggles my mind. So... Anyways, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly, step by step, how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.